And every day, I hope we celebrate Jesus in general, uh, but more so now as we remember that this season that we do, Christmas, really means not a lot without Jesus. And so each week we've been talking about a gift that we get, a gift of hope, a gift of peace, a gift of love, and, and today we're going to be talking about a gift of joy. For many of us here, I don't know about everybody, but I know it's not everybody, we've got some that don't need to have this for a while, but one of the things that gives the greatest joy is being a parent. Yep. And children. One of the things that also brings the most pain is being a parent <laughs> and having children. Um, so today we're going to be looking at a gift, a, a, a gift of joy that comes from being a parent. One who is willing to step in to follow what God wants for her to do even when it seems ridiculous, even when it doesn't make sense, even when everything looks a little suspect, I will do what you ask me to do. And because of that, great joy comes, not just for her, but for all of us, the joy of Jesus. And so the text that we're going to be in, we're going to bounce around, but the main text, if you want to read along, we're just going to read through this together, and we're going to break it down. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 and 38. Luke chapter 1, I'll give you time to get there. I will have it on the board. But like I said, always better for you to have it yourself. Just to keep me honest. You know, you never know. You never know if I get the wrong person. Have so. the Bible's out. Let's, let's take this journey together. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. I gotta get my tongue ready to talk today. Let's try this again. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. <laughs> Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. He says, I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, the relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, May, the, may your word be fulfilled in the angel left her. There's a lot to take in from these 10, a little over 10 verses that we just read. The scene has to be one that would, I think, make any of us here very uncomfortable. I would be uncomfortable to know that somebody came to my soon-to-be wife and told her that you're going to be pregnant and it's not coming from me. So one, that would be weird. Two, she gets it and is also kind of scared about what's going to happen. But the more and more God shows up, the more she relents and says these words that we'll talk about in a, in a minute, but may your word be fulfilled in me. I think there's going to be challenges and times in life, and usually those feel the most present when we feel uncomfortable that God is pushing us towards something that maybe we don't want to do. But what if we had the mindset and spirit of Mary that just says, I'm your servant. Other versions say that, like, I, I am your slave. May your word be fulfilled in you. I'm committed to you. What you say goes, and I will do it. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's going to get me to be looked at by my whole tribe as some kind of harlot, 
even if it'll make me looked at by my fiance as a way that is going to bring me disgrace to my family, I'm willing to risk it for you. She leans into it. So what do we do? We're going to see some different things about joy, this gift of joy. The first one is joy is trusting when you want to doubt. Joy is trusting when you want to doubt. It would be really easy to say, this is weird, and walk away. Find no joy in that. But instead, joy is what Mary decides to trust God, even when she would rather doubt. And Isaiah 26, 4 says, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Trust in God. God is the only thing that you will ever experience that will stay consistent. That he is who he is. This is God who was, who is, and who will be. This is who we serve. Even when it's uncomfortable and doesn't feel right, lean in. Trust, because who he is is eternal. Mary does this with those words that we talked about. She said that, I, I don't understand how this could be. How is it going to happen? I'm just a virgin. This doesn't make sense. And he explains it. And she says, I'm your servant. We find joy sometimes in the Lord when we just lean in when we doubt. The next step, joy is receiving what you want to reject. Sometimes I imagine um, how this would look. Um, the Jews were known for their hospitality. So I want you to, to kind of I'm going to paint a picture before I read uh, some scripture. The Jews were known for their hospitality. When, when uh, Mary and Joseph had to leave to go to Bethlehem for the census, they get there and everything is already kind of full, right? We know the story. A lot of times we say, I can't believe nobody made room for them. It's a false statement because somebody did. Where there was no place to be, they were given a place to rest their heads. When the people could have said, no, the street will be your bed. They said, we have a manger. Now, we paint a picture of what that would look like. You think it's a barn. Some people say it may not look like that. I'm not here to debate it. It is a very humble bird. But there was room. The innkeeper did find a space. Could you imagine if they just rejected them? What it would be like? Instead, what ends up happening for this place is people come from all over to see the child that's underneath the star. The wise men come to bring gifts. The shepherds come to worship and celebrate. It becomes a place of worship, of hope, of love, and ultimately of joy. In Luke 2, 6 through 7, says, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And Hebrews 13, 2 says this, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without even knowing. They found a place, and in doing so, without even knowing it, were hosting not just an angel, but the Son of God. The gift of the Savior easily could have been rejected. Now, even if we think about this for Mary herself or Joseph, the story actually has so many layers because Joseph was going to do the gentleman thing and just quietly dismiss her and move on with his life so that she wouldn't get stoned or something like that. But instead, an angel appears to Joseph. His heart is changed because now he understands that he plays a role in God's plan for Jesus and instead wraps himself around Mary. They accept this as his own and raises him like it is his own, even though it's the son of God. It is easy to reject things that we don't get or don't understand, but when they come from God, it brings joy if we just find ways to accept what we'd rather reach for. Joy is celebrating what you want to fear. Now this one, I think, um, I did a slow dive, it wasn't a deep dive, shallow dive into this. So for those who like to take deeper dives into the Bible, please do this and find it for me. Every time that I found in the Bible that an angel appears to anybody, they are scared out of their minds. 
I have not yet seen it where an angel shows up and they're like, what would you like from me, angel? Instead, they're terrifying. And I can imagine that angel of the Lord would probably be terrifying, not just because it's scary, because we've never seen something like it and it would be like, what is going on? And every time, an angel has to say, usually if, it's, if they're coming in a good place, fear not. <laughs> Almost as God had to script this with them. Okay, we're going to go meet. We're going to go meet the humans again. Let's practice this. When you show up, they're going to be afraid. I need you to practice. Do not be afraid. I'm here for you. It'll be okay. A lot of times, we miss out on a real joy that comes from God because of fear. Fear gets in the way of so much for you to pursue in life let alone to pursue in the name of the Lord. Oftentimes, people miss out on reaching their full potential because they're afraid to take leaps. Instead, they'd rather sit on what is safe. What would have been safe for Mary is to say, I don't want to do this. I'd rather just live the life that I already thought was going to be there. Because that life makes more sense to me. It's more comfortable. I'll be accepted. I won't be looked at as weird. And it'll be okay. I'll wait to have the boy later, a different boy, one that comes from the Jews. But instead, she celebrates because she is chosen. If you look back at the scripture that we read earlier, it says, you have found great favor from the Lord Most High. You were chosen to do something so great. Now, not all of us here, actually none of us here, are going to be chosen to give birth to Jesus. Spoiler. Yep. However, all of you are going to be chosen to do something great for God. In whatever way he has chosen to do that within you, but it is up to us, up to, us to accept this gift and to celebrate it. You find joy within it. What might that be for you? Maybe that is you are just the person who's going to be going to people and encouraging them. Maybe you're the one that's just people are going to come to you for wisdom. Maybe it's going to be for your generosity. Maybe it's going to be by service. Maybe it'll be by the words that you get to speak to. I don't know what it's going to be for you. But I know that God created you to be a master verse, to do good works, as the Bible tells me. Now, I think what he creates us to do and what we choose to do are two different things. And in this story that we're celebrating this morning, aren't we so glad that Mary would choose to celebrate being the mother of our Savior? You say, I am your servant, or whatever it is, even if it's terrifying, do it through me. What I loved in the scriptures that we read is the verse, verse 37. It's a very short verse, but I think it's one that I need to start using more in my life. It says, for no word of God will ever fail. There was a promise to Elizabeth, this is where that scripture came from, hey Elizabeth, going to have a baby, but she said she wasn't going to, but now she's already this far along, because no word of God will ever fail. When God makes a promise, his promise won't fail. When God tells us of things to come, it won't fail. Now, part of that is also us seeing that, that not just through a, our own human lenses, but seeing it through a godly lens of like, God has promised us eternity when we commit our lives to his son. The gift of Jesus leads us to an eternity with him. When we follow through and we live the life that he's guiding us through through his word, the promises are there and they do not fail. They never are in They always come full. And this is something that without knowing that, she was still willing to take the leap. And I think we, I'm not, a, I'm not an angel and I'm not Gabriel, but I am a Gavin. And I want to tell you this. Maybe this will push you forward too. The word of God will never fail. The word that you read, the scriptures that you open, they weren't there to be a good book that would outsell every book ever in the world. It is a book to lead you. But all of it points us to Jesus. And Jesus points us to the Father. And through this gift of his birth, we are received because he came to this earth and chose to die for us and take our clothes. 
but he received by his father. Because that is a promise that doesn't fail. So, now this is where everybody has a phone. Uh, if you don't, if you had a paper or pencil that's tucked away in your purse, this is where we're going to get into some things for you to write down. I'll give you time. Take your notes out on your cell phone. Even if you don't do it, just pretend that you're doing it. So when I look at you, I think you're doing it, because that'll make me feel good. We're going to look at how we can choose joy today. And we're going to start with the word share. So, it's a holiday season. We're going to be around a lot of our family. We might be around a lot of friends. We might get some gatherings. If I each family member to share one thing that they're trusting God to handle. One of the things about joy is when we are grateful, we find more joy in, in things. This morning I shared a quote uh, in class by uh, former president Teddy Roosevelt who says, comparison is the thief of joy. Usually we don't find joy in our lives because we're too busy comparing ourselves to other people. This is especially true in our, in our young people, but it, it is not just for them. Us older people have been comparing ourselves to people our whole lives and trying either to measure up to something that we never will, or we finally get to what we thought was going to make us happy because we're comparing ourselves only to find that we're still not as happy as we thought we would be. Because our, what we're trying to measure it by is based on others versus finding joy, which is different than happiness. Joy in God is something that is sustainable. Happiness comes and goes. And if you're looking for happiness all the time, you're going to be disappointed. But if you're looking for joy, you will find it in God, and it will overcome suffering. It will overcome heartache and grief. It will overcome anger and bitterness. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is eternal. So we're going to start with invite your family members to say, what are you going to trust God to handle that you have a hard time letting go? That's our first step. Number two is encourage. Okay, you need to take notes for this so that you remind yourself, because I am a forgetful person. So good news is we all have a Siri or we have an Alexa in our lives that we can say, Alexa, remind me this. Write a note to someone who is experiencing fear and worry and let them know that you're praying that God will give them the courage they need. We say this a lot, and it comes across as disingenuous sometimes when somebody's having a hard time to say, pray for you. Praying for you, praying for you, partner. I know you're having a hard time. Just know I'm praying for you. And we use it as a substitute word because we don't really know what to say to them. So the best thing we say is, I'm praying for you. But then we leave and we probably don't pray for them. Being honest. And sometimes I'll forget too. Maybe in this moment, as you're writing this like note, you, uh, write this note to them, uh, pray for readers. them, uh, shoot them a text. And, hey, I know that there's some things going on in life right now. This is but something I new that um, my God is big. So you, I'm praying for him for you. It gives me courage. You know how good that feels uh, sometimes just to uh, receive that fear though from somebody? Leaders, that they're uh, praying for you, and, that you're being thought of, yeah. that you're loved. Take some time to encourage someone today. And if you are an overachiever, pick two people. You know? But start with one, because uh, I like goals to be met. Sometimes you shoot too high. I'm going to do this to everybody I know. And then you're going to feel disappointed and you can give up. Just find one person, pray for them, write them a note. When they write back to you and say thank you, find another person, say, hey, do this with me. Start something cool. Encourage people. All right, number two, evaluate. Now, this is hard for us to do. We don't like to evaluate things unless it's negative because for some reason we like to do that. Hey, make an inventory of things that bring you joy. So you know how many times I sit with some clients of mine who are suffering with depression and they think the whole world is terrible and against them and I say, you know what, life is hard. I'll agree with you on that. Let's just take a moment to find one thing that brings some joy in your life. And, and, and they might take a little bit and they find one and say, oh, that's a good one. Is there anything else? Let's just, let's just create a list. What are things that bring you joy? And I know we all have more that we allow ourselves to see because our world is consumed with negativity and our brains, believe it or not, are wired to go that way because in life, 
It's easier to go negative because it's easy. It's an easy road, but we talked about earlier, and the more we make negative decisions in our life, the more they just become habit, and then we forget to stop and smell roses. That's why they make posters that say stop and smell roses. Because we need remind <laughs> Right? So every day, just stop for a minute. Look around and be grateful for the things that bring you joy. For me, I was up here leading worship, and I had gone in kids' class, and I heard her singing really well. And I made me smile, because I know she likes to sing, she doesn't normally get to come up here. So, that brought me joy today. See how easy it is? Stop for a minute, think about it, smile as you say it, say, man, that is true, that brings me joy. Express. Make the time and space to share a meal and a fun experience. Okay. This week is going to be very busy. We already know this. Because the other thing that we'll get up besides being negative is procrastinating. So I know you're going to be rushing around getting things ready. But what if we just took a minute? And this doesn't have to be like something crazy. But what if you just chose to slow down and share something? a meal, an experience. Don't miss the joy in sharing the experience of Christians with each other. Great. Some of us have kids home for, for, for the first time in a while, college. Some of you uh, might be going to see family you haven't seen in a little bit. Maybe you're just hanging out with your own immediate family and it's crazy and you're running around. Slow down. Take time to experience something. Go do something fun. Go laugh a little bit. Go share something um, and I want to, I'm going to end with, there's a prayer that was written, um, yeah, Francis, St. Francis of Assisi wrote this prayer. It's also a song that we, um, have sung before too, but I don't want to go too fast. So do you need a recap? I really want to do these. I don't want to, I don't <laughs> I took a while to write these up. Uh, so just real quick, share. Invite a family member. What's one thing you're going to give to God? Trust that he's going to handle it for you. Encourage. Write a note to someone. Let them know that you're praying for them. Evaluate. Make your inventory of things that bring you joy. Express. Make time to experience this season and fun with each other. Okay, one of the things that brings joy for us is, is being an instrument of peace for God. Uh, one that allows us to trust in Him, that our hope is in Him, that we find peace in Him, we find joy in Him. And because of that, I just want to read this prayer for all of you and then um, out of time, a song of invitation. Um, I would, can I trust this to you? Let's do this together. Let's do this together. I'm going to try to give us a nice, slow cadence. I think it's a prayer that we should read because we should want to be with So you ready? All right, here we go. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is injury, pardon. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive, it is pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born into eternal life. I love this prayer because in all of it, it takes so much of the emphasis away from always thinking about us to putting it on to caring and loving and being compassionate and trying to understand and pardon and love others. And our world wants you, at this point of the year, to think in a consumer way. How can I consume everything? I want us just to slow down and see how can I use my life to give to others in a way that they may know of Jesus, especially during this time of Christmas. Okay, if you have any needs, I think this prayer speaks for the prayer that I would love to give you as we leave. But we're going to stand, we're going to sing a song of invitation. Where if you have a need or if you have a desire to commit your life to Christ, if you want to know more about this Jesus who was born, only who would live to take a cross for us or love to sit.
and talk with you about that. But if not, let's stand. Let's sing a song of invitation. I'll be up front. Mark will be in the back. If you have any needs, we'd love to sit, pray, 